Today I have for you 10, count them, 10 secrets of luxury YouTubers. Things that we deal with on a regular basis that you guys probably have no idea about. Hello, Roxy. You'll want to see her, don't you? There she is. Hello, Roxy. You're beautiful. Everybody loves you. And here's Baron. Everyone loves you too, Bear. The number one secret of luxury YouTubers I've never heard anyone talk about before, but I know it exists because it has happened to me a couple of times, and it's something that may blow your mind. It blows mine every time it happens. I'm always quite baffled by it. That one I will reveal at the end of the video, so make sure you stay tuned all the way to the end. Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel, or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget, from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos, and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is that you get to see my community posts on your YouTube homepage, where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. And there have been tons of great sales sales lately, so I've been posting a lot. Okay, let's jump in to the 10 secrets of luxury YouTubers. Number 10. You guys already know that we get product offers. You've heard other YouTubers say this. We get emails, depending on how big your channel is, I think. You get emails every day or once a week or whatever. I get emails every day. I sometimes get or often get multiple emails a day. The vast majority of them, as you've heard from other YouTubers, are things that have nothing to do with my channel. What you don't know is how really terrible these offers are. So for example, I have gotten offers from places Places that want me to review video games. Does this look like a video game channel to you? I recently got one for a hair removal device. I get offers for fake bags pretty often, and in my comment section, do y'all know that we get spam in the comment section? That happens too, and a lot of those are for fake bags. Those I delete everything. One of the many reasons that I have my comments set up for me to approve them before they go live. I've had offers for lingerie, as if I'm going to model that on my channel. But I want to read to you one of the offers that I got recently, just so you have an idea. And this is very typical of what these offers are like and how really terrible they are. They say at the beginning of 2022, we will release a new line of electronics and we want to conduct a global campaign with YouTube bloggers. So now I'm expecting to hear what kinds of electronics and also YouTube bloggers isn't really a thing. It's just YouTubers. And we vlog, we don't blog. Different things. We are the blank name of the company team, and we have chosen your YouTube channel to create a promo for our new line of electronics. We create devices that bring joy and convenience to millions of people around the world. And each of these sentences, by the way, ends with a period and an exclamation point. We decided to order a commercial from you about a new line of a new line of electronics, which will be released at the end of March, period, exclamation point. So at no point do they tell me what kinds of electronics these are. At no point do they give me a website or any other identifying information. You get an idea of how awful these offers are. So when someone tells you I get offers that are terrible all the time, uh, yeah, believe them. That's, that's the kind of thing we get on a daily basis. Secret number two. There is an unspoken etiquette rule book amongst YouTubers. This mostly has to do with tag videos or acknowledging other YouTubers when they've influenced a video that you are making or any part of the content that you are making. I try to be very good about this. So for example, if you are doing a tag video, the etiquette is to mention the person who started the tag or the people who started the tag and also to mention the people who tagged you, whoever you know about who tagged you. Because sometimes you don't know. Not everyone does this. And again, it's an unspoken rule and I think a lot of the newer YouTubers probably just it slips their mind or they don't think about it. But I would tell you that sometimes when this happens and somebody forgets to mention you, some YouTubers get upset about it. And that brings me to secret number three. Oh wait, that was nine and eight. Sorry. I have it numbered differently on my computer and I have to do the numbers backwards in my head. So number eight. Behind the scenes YouTuber gossip absolutely exists. People talk about each other. People also talk about some subscribers. So YouTubers talking about each other as far as gossip and negative things is something 
that I do my best to stay away from. I'm not interested in negative things and bashing other YouTubers or gossiping or secret news stories. I mean, I could tell you some things I've heard, but I'm not interested in spreading that gossip around. There are rifts between people too. Sometimes somebody will talk in a video and, you know, let's say, I've done videos before and things that annoy me about luxury YouTubers. When I comment on something like that, personally, I have a bunch of people in mind, not just one person that I'm talking about for any given topic. But sometimes when you give an example of something, there will be YouTubers who think that you're talking about them specifically. They get their feelings hurt and that's understandable. A lot of us are like that, self-conscious and we have insecurities. It's human nature. And I've had conversations with other YouTubers before where they're asking me, you know, have you seen this? video? Or are they talking about me? And Or did you hear about so-and-so? Or can you believe so-and-so talked about this? But YouTubers are human and some of us can be just as catty as people out in the world because we are people out in the world. But to counter the gossipy, catty side of it, a lot of us are also very supportive of each other. And these can happen at the same time with the same people. A lot of us, especially in our friend groups, we make a point of supporting each other's channels, watching each other's videos. We talk behind the scenes about YouTube strategies or is this a good idea or is this a good title or look at my thumbnail, what do you think of that? Or should I talk about this or should I not? Is this gonna be controversial? What? How do you think people will react to this? But as far as watching other people's videos and commenting, you guys know, cause you watch videos, how much time it takes to watch a video and watch several videos. So for me, as you're well aware, where I have two full-time jobs, one of which is YouTube. I don't have time to watch other channels from many people. I watch all of Yota and Winnie's videos. Sometimes I'm late watching them. I don't even watch them the same day. I watch all of Devin's videos and Gwenny's videos. I watch most of Dale's videos. I hope I'm not forgetting anybody, but that's about it as far as trying to watch all of the videos from that person. And then I watch a sprinkling of other videos as they pop up on my YouTube feed or I hear about something, but I just don't have time to watch everybody and I feel bad about it. Sometimes there are people who will comment on my channel and say, hey, I've been watching you forever and you inspired me to create a channel myself and here's my first video or please go check out my channel and subscribe. And I often will go and subscribe, but having the time to watch those videos and to be consistent about it and, and like stick with the person, it's just there aren't enough hours in the day and it's nothing personal at all. And I often will promote those people on my channel. I do try to be really good about promoting smaller channels and I only promote channels that I really like. Lumi Level Up, I'm gonna link her below because I think, like I said in a recent video, we recently collabed on an artist collaboration luxury video. And I think her channel really is worth watching if you enjoy mine. I think you'll really love hers too. So go check her out. But yeah, I do try to support other channels and a lot of other people do too. And I like to do collaborations with other people, especially if they're a smaller channel, because they get a bump in subscribers from it. And I want to be able to help another channel because I remember what it was like when my channel was really small. I also mentioned when I was talking about YouTubers who gossip about each other, that we also talk about you guys sometimes. Now, this happens in good and bad ways. Sometimes we talk about so-and-so is wonderful, they're so nice, and they leave the nicest comments and whatever. They're, they're always there, they're supportive, they watch all of our channels, but we also talk about the people who leave really mean comments or who leave really passive aggressive comments like I don't have one in front of me but like I really admire your channel but I hate what you're doing on my channel and here are all the details of the things that I hate. There was a person lately who was doing who was leaving a lot of comments like that and when we come across people like that and it becomes a consistent pattern of behavior from them just really rude comments like that not constructive criticism just being mean. We let each other know about that so that, you know, like if Winnie, for example, says, hey, I'm getting these mean comments from this person, I can go check my YouTube and search for that person and see what kind of comments they've left from me. And I can say, oh, well, they love me or, oh yeah, they're, they've left mean comments for me too. Let's block them because we don't need that kind of negativity on our channels. 
that's not what it's about here. Secret number seven, speaking of subscribers, conflicting advice from subscribers. This happens so often, especially if we ask for an opinion from you guys, like, hey, here's a new kind of video that I'm doing. What do you think about it? Do you want to see more of this? We'll get people who say, oh, I love it. It's wonderful. It's a nice change of pace. I want to see more of it. And then we'll also get people who say, oh, I really don't like this. This is terrible. It's not you. It's not your channel. It's not interesting. I don't want to watch this don't do this kind of video again. It's It can be difficult sometimes, and I know sometimes you guys probably feel like, well, they asked for my advice and I gave it to them and they're not following my advice. That's why, because we get conflicting de device. We get conflicting advice from you guys because people have different opinions. And it can be hard to sort that out sometimes. Sometimes I think, well, I shouldn't even ask them because I know I'm going to get people who give me all kinds of different answers that conflict. But then I don't want to not ask you. I don't know. It's a bit of a conundrum. Number six. As luxury YouTubers, we get a lot of criticism about the things that we buy. This is something that happens in the luxury world. A lot of criticism about buying luxury handbags in particular. We're all familiar with this. However, what I find really interesting about it is that a viewer who's coming to a channel to watch a video about luxury handbags, you should know the video is about luxury handbags and the channel is about the same. So why would you come to complain about it? Also, if a channel is about luxury handbags, you're gonna see somebody talking about a bunch of different handbags. So why complain about that? Why isn't that just what you expect to see and that's that. For example, if you go to a channel that's all about reviewing vacuum cleaners, do you complain that they're buying too many vacuum cleaners? Like, it's the same thing. We buy a bunch of bags to show you guys, to review them, to give you information about these different bags to help you make a decision about what you might or might not want to get, just like with vacuum reviews. Why is there so much hate about it? We know why there's so much hate. We've talked about that in other videos. It's all about status and all kinds of other things. We won't go into that right now. But then along these lines, we also get criticism if we stop buying things. Like a lot of people are doing the low buys and the no buys, or a lot of people will say, you know, I have so many bags, I'm gonna downsize, I'm going to curate my collection and be more of a minimalist. And people get flack for that. We also have people accuse us of being in tons of debt because we have handbags. These assumptions are coming from nowhere. They're just coming from the person's head. They're completely made up. I have a whole video on that. I will link it below. But like on the vacuum review channels, do people go there and say, gosh, you must be in so much credit card debt for, because of all these vacuums you buy? Or if we're sent free bags, sometimes we get criticism for that. Even though it's part of our business here on our YouTube channel, do people go and complain that people are getting free vacuums on vacuum review channels? It just blows my mind, the hypocrisy of it. That's all. Number five, YouTube burnout and luxury burnout. I put out three videos a week. Do I get tired of doing that? Sometimes I absolutely do. We have all thought about ending our channels at some point. I've thought about it a few times. Mostly I love what I do. I enjoy doing it. It's fun. It's a creative challenge. But yeah, sometimes it gets tiring and sometimes you get bored with it and sometimes you get burnt out from doing so much work. The same goes for luxury. We talk about handbags, mostly just handbags on these channels. You get tired of it sometimes. I know viewers do too. I get tired of watching videos about handbags. I have pretty much stopped using Instagram because I'm so tired of scrolling through and all I see are pictures of handbags. I just get really bored with that. So if you get bored with luxury videos sometimes and you need a break from them, know that you're not alone. We feel the same way. Number four. This kind of goes along with the criticism about us buying things. This is that the luxury community, the luxury handbag community, there's this expectation that the YouTubers in that community should do these videos as a hobby and not as a business. It should just be something that we do for fun in our spare time and not something that we care about making any money on. And the second we start promoting things and it's obvious that we're promoting something, people start accusing us of just doing it for the money. Or if somebody says they're posting an affiliate link where you get a little bit of a commission if somebody clicks on that link and buys something, or you've teamed up with somebody or you've got a sponsorship with somebody, there are some people who 
We're like, oh, she's making money on that. I'm not gonna support that. I'm not gonna click that link. I just don't understand that mentality. That's like saying, I'm gonna use a simple little cookie business as an example here. Somebody starts baking, making cookies, cupcakes and stuff. My sister was a baker, so I'll use that example. Starts making these as a hobby, takes them to family events or whatever and gives them out and then starts getting attention for that and is saying, oh, you, you're really good at that. So then you start selling them and then your business gets really successful. That's like somebody saying, well, I'm not gonna buy her cookies. She shouldn't be making money from that. I can buy cookies. Anybody can buy cookies. There are lots of cookies out there. I'm not gonna support her. It, it just doesn't make sense. Why would you not want to support someone whose product you enjoy? If you like somebody's videos, and you're interested in supporting them in some kind of financial way, click the links and buy something if, if you want to buy something. Like, I just don't understand the mentality of thinking that somebody shouldn't be paid for doing work because this is work. I've talked so many times on this channel about if you don't have a YouTube channel and you don't make videos on a consistent basis, you have no idea how much work it is, how very time consuming it is. And there are some YouTubers that try to capitalize on the success that they've had on YouTube and expand to other things. Like maybe they have a little product line that they've launched and they're offering it to you guys. Or some people will do Patreon or they'll have, what's it called? It's like YouTube premiere where you can sign up to be a premiere, something you pay for and then the YouTuber gets some cut of that. I don't see anything wrong with that. Like I think one of the problems people have with, with YouTubers doing that, if you're a luxury YouTuber, is that you feel like as a subscriber you don't want to give your money to this person like a Patreon for example, like make a donation so they can buy more handbags, especially luxury handbags, when you can't afford to buy your own perhaps, or you have to save up for your own. I understand that. I do think with something like Patreon that a YouTuber should offer something in return above and beyond what everybody who gets the videos for free gets. There's a YouTuber called Nikki Positano. She's in Positano, Italy. She does Patreon in a great way. She has a few different levels. You pay different amounts based on what level you want and you get things in return, like you get personalized Q&A sessions, or you get access to this extra content that other people don't get, or if you're traveling to Positano, you get Nikki's little guidebook, things like that. So I think if you're offering something, it's okay to ask for some money for that, because you've done work to create the thing you're offering, and you deserve to be compensated. Along those lines, a lot of people also expect luxury YouTubers to be very casual and a conversational style and have like personal relationships with viewers. And once you start progressing to a different level where you're doing more advertising, sponsorships, your videos become more professional, more appealing to a wider audience, you start getting criticism for that. But the thing is, those more professional videos that are a little more generic and that appeal to more mass audience. And when you have better lighting and better backgrounds and all that, and it, and it starts looking more professional, those are the videos that get more views and make your channel more successful. I mean, think about all the biggest YouTubers in the luxury space. They have gorgeous environments. They tend to look a certain way, have their hair and makeup and all that perfect. They do a lot of advertising. They have a lot of links to share with you. And it's very commercial and I'm not a fan of those channels either. I prefer the more conversational, more personal style too, but this is just a reality, the world we live in. I don't think people should be criticized for being successful. Number three, there are people who come to our channels all about luxury handbags and assume that watching our videos gives them everything they need to know about us, that our videos are representative of who we are and we are nothing more than what they see in the videos. For example, that luxury handbags are our priority in life and that's all we really care about. And anyone with a functioning brain would realize that this is not true. The videos that you see are a tiny, tiny fraction of our lives. Even if we're showing you vlogs, tiny fraction. Keep in mind that a 10 minute vlog, for example, is 10 minutes out of an entire day, if it was done in a day, or 10 minutes out of an entire weekend. You don't know what happened the rest of the time. Also keep in mind, these videos are edited, so there's a lot you're not seeing. And just because you watch a YouTuber and have been watching them for years and you're familiar with their channel and things that they say on their channel and their ideas on their channel and their collection, whatever, it doesn't mean you know who they are. And some people 
are confused by that. Secret number two, you guys know that we get mean comments. Comes with the territory on social media because there are terrible people in the world who think it's okay to be mean to other people. What you may not know is how very vile some of the comments are. Now I've done mean comment videos before, I've done quite a few, so you're familiar probably with some of the kinds of comments that I get, or that we get. However, every once in a while, now for me luckily these are very rare and I haven't had one like this in a very long time, there are some truly horrific comments. The worst one I ever got, and I won't tell you word for word and exactly what these people said, or this person said, but the worst one I ever got was someone who, in graphic detail, threatened the lives of my animals. I don't want to share that with you because I don't want to put the imagery in my head that that person explained in their comment. That comment was one that I not only blocked the person but also reported it because it was so violent and horrific. There have also been comments that are sexually explicit and that violate you in that way. And this is not something I hear YouTubers talking about, so that's secret number two. And secret number one, something else I've never heard YouTubers talk about, unless it's a really big YouTuber and it's kind of a news story, is we get stalkers. Even relatively small channels like mine, like I don't have millions of subscribers, right? I've had two or three people that I would qualify as stalkers. Now these are not people who have shown up to my home. They're not stalking me physically, but they online stalk. It's disturbing. I can describe two different scenarios here. The most recent one was someone who emailed me, and both of these have to do with email, because they're not going to behave this way in the comment section. I would assume they know there's something wrong with their behavior when they're messaging you privately and not putting this out in public. But I had someone message me, and every once in a while I'll get somebody who sends me a long email that says, hey, I really like your channel, I've been watching you for a while. I think they feel like they know so much about me, they want to tell me their life story, and that's fine, and I read those emails, but I don't always respond. A couple of reasons for that. One is, I don't always have time. Sometimes I mean to respond, but I'm on my way to work when I read it, or I'm at work, or I've got a deadline, or have, you know, I just have a lot going on, and then it gets lost in the emails, because I get a lot more emails, and I forget about it, unfortunately, and I just never get back to it. Another one is, sometimes I can read something, and I've read enough comments and interacted with enough people online at this point, I can generally tell how a conversation's gonna go. Like if somebody sends me five emails in a row, that's probably not somebody I want to keep talking to because they're gonna keep bombarding me with emails, and I just don't have time for that. And it's not the kind of relationship I want. But I had this person send me an email, and she was telling me all this personal stuff about herself and some of the things that we have in common. I either didn't respond or I didn't say much in response. Whatever the case was, I didn't respond in the way that she wanted. Time went by, like a month or two went by, and then I got this email from her that was very angry and talking about how she'd sent me this personal email and I never responded and she was so disappointed with me and blah blah blah, all these things, and much angrier than that really. But when that happens, that tells me, and there was more to the story than what I'm telling you here, but that tells me something's not quite right. Like when you get that upset, when a stranger on the internet doesn't reply to you, there's something going on there. And actually that's a similar thing to what happened the first time I had a stalker. It was an ongoing conversation I was having with this person, and it came to a point where I don't even remember what happened, but I stopped responding because it was too much and there were things being said that were really weird from this person. When you stop responding, in my experience, the reaction you get from them is anger. They start virtually yelling at you and telling you what an awful person you are and all this stuff, but then when you you still don't respond, you still keep getting angry emails, you get a few of those, but then eventually they get that you're not responding and they still want to have a relationship with you, so they do a turnaround, 
and all of a sudden they're nice again and they're apologizing for their, their, for their behavior. And at that point, um, no, you've revealed to me who you are. I want nothing to do with that, thank you. So those are what I call the stalkers, the people that watch your videos, think they know you, think you're best friends, expect you to feel the same way and to behave in the same way that they do in terms of having a relationship. And that's just not reality. I had somebody tell me once that they were disappointed that I wasn't keeping up a communication with them and they they said you know it's like the only people you'll talk to are other youtubers well there's a good reason for that that's because if I'm just talking to somebody who doesn't have a YouTube channel it's a very one-sided relationship you have an idea of who I am because you see my videos you hear my voice you hear my ideas and all the things I have no idea at all who you are whereas if you have a channel that I've been watching, I have a better idea of who you are. Like if Yota didn't have a channel, I'd think she was crazy, I wouldn't talk to her. But since she does, we've actually become very close friends. I do tend to talk to other YouTubers more because then it's a two-way thing. We both have a better understanding of each other. I am careful when I'm commenting or replying to comments, I'm careful not to only reply to YouTubers because I feel like that's really unfair, but yeah stalkers. Well, those are my 10 secrets about luxury YouTubers. I hope that was enlightening and you heard some things you'd never heard before. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.